All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy King Mal with the sticking point. Shout out to my other co-host, G. As you all know, Gabe, the ladies, you know you love him. And Mr. Brandon, we call him B, the man that's connected to every single person in the world. I kid you not. This is the sticking point. Right now, right now, we have Chef T, born in Sanford, Florida, born and raised. Uh, catering oh, chef, the building, and then transition over to a private chef. This man owns his own sauce. So when you're ready, make sure you go ahead and connect with him. He's a man of faith, man of honor. He's an individual that impacts people's lives on a day-to-day basis. All in all, in the full package, he's the person that walks into the room, and if the lights are off, they turn on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chef T. How you doing, my boy? How you What's doing, up, man? <laughs> Hey, and that's that's that that's a uh, you know that uh, intro. That's kind of fire. I was yeah. sitting there going, "Who is that kid? Like, that's a good dude. Like, I gotta meet him." <laughs> so, so talk to me, man. How, how's your <laughs> you for real? How's your day going, man? How's your day, man? My my day is good, man. I can't complain. You know, um, just slow right now, but um, I'm using this time to kind of recover and rest and uh, mentally prepare for what 2024 has in store, you know, um, and I think that's the biggest thing, uh, back in the gym, you know, I know people talk about it, but, okay. you know, I, I told, <laughs> I told somebody the other day, I was like, man, you know, I'm always starting and stopping, starting and stopping. I was like, at least I'm consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can, I can hang my hat on that. You know what I mean? So that's the one consistency that you got. Yeah, you know what I mean? That, that's a key. You know what I mean? Check that off. You know, I ain't gonna beat myself up for starting and stopping. At least right. I know I do it, you know? So, but um, but now, nah, man, I'm back in in the gym and uh, just trying to get physically right, um, because this this chef life is it's tough on the on the body, man. It, it can yeah. be taxing, you I know, bet. especially uh, long hours. You know, uh, sometimes I get called to do jobs and um, places and uh, go in the kitchens and help out or whatever, and it it can be you know a 15, 16 hour day, you know, Ooh. stacked on top of each other, and you just sitting there going. Did I really pick the right career? You right, know right. I mean? So you know, but but I love it, man. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, this is it's not just something that I do. It's just like it speaks to you. You know, it's like a, a musician, you know, seeing notes or an artist, you know, seeing colors on a canvas. You know, it's mm-hmm. literally when I walk into a grocery store, it's like, okay, how can I turn this into something that's you know, either A, different, or B, even if it's the same, but something that's going to have someone go, man, I'm glad I ate that, and I'm, I want to eat another another right. one or two of those, you know what I mean? So, but um, but the main thing, you know, for me is it's all about the service and people just leaving going, you know, not not only was the food great, but that was a good dude, man, and, and um, I want to have him back, you know, even if it's not, you know, for an event, it's just to hang out with him and you know, pick his brain because he's a, you know, he's that guy. So um, I, de- I definitely, you know, put my hat on that too. So you you are that guy, first of all. You 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 are that guy. So question for you, right? Um, born and raised in Sanford, Florida. Yeah. How was that like? Like growing up in in that. So I was born. I was born in Sanford, Florida, and. Every environment I was in at, at certain times wasn't always the best. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at it now to, to where you are at this moment, how were you able to overpass the stereotype of saying you can't make it out of certain situations? Because you have how rappers and all of them in different states, they live in certain neighborhoods. Sanford's not bad, don't get me wrong, but there are neighborhoods. Um, when I was growing up, I lived in Seminole Gardens. There were neighborhoods that weren't always the best. But um, oh, yeah. making it out of those situations and and going forward, uh, how how did you how did you do that? Uh, I mean, I would say for me, you know, I never looked at at Sanford as a bad place, even though people try to you know paint it to be. Um, you know, growing up here, you you actually because it's a small town, so you have friends that you've known for. I mean, now I'm in my 40s, so you know, you're talking about 30 plus years. You know what I mean? That. Um, But even then, just growing up, you know, being in sports, um, just being around different groups of people, but like it's kind of family oriented, you know what I mean, in a way. Um, 
And so for me, uh, coming from a large family, I mean, like that was, I mean, I just, I just knew and wanted more, you know, um, cause I always felt like I was different in the sense of like, not better than anyone, but I always felt like, um, I could do more, um, and I could help more people and I can be, um, something that they can look and go, you know what? I inspired to be like, like that, or, you know, Hey, he overcame a lot of these things and he is where he's at. You know what I mean? I wonder how he did that and kind of can mentor and, um, and pretty much just give back that way, you know? Um, but as far as like how I did it, you know, just, uh, just work. Um, I watched my mom work a lot. So, uh, to all the single moms, I mean, yeah, I know it, it, you know, it sucks, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, someone's watching, your kids right. are watching, and they're taking notes, mental notes, and it actually builds up that callus inside of them that mm -hmm. when, when it's time for them to get out and go get it, they're really going to go get it because that's where it's coming from, you know what I mean? And um, so that that's a lot to do with it. And, you know, um, me and my cousin, we, we called my uncles <laughs> and told them, he, we said, Hey man, so we just gotta thank you because <laughs> you know that those Saturdays you had us out helping you, you know, and we was you know complaining and like oh, I don't want to go play, but actually you know it was building something a work ethic, you know. And right. That I mean that that to the to this day I mean, you know you may be smarter than me, you may be you know more fit than me, you may be you know all these different things, but one thing I'm gonna hang my hat on is. You ain't finna outwork. You're not outworking. You're not outworking. <laughs> you know, I'm pulling up every day. Exactly. I got. Yes, yes, sir. You know, it's like, is it gonna be you or me? <laughs> it's definitely gonna be me. You know what I mean? So, um, but that's just that's just it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I I definitely um would say you know just just staying and seeing things that you know um make you just go, yeah, okay. All right, right, now I know what I got to do. You know? So, so in the, in that instance, right? And I was looking at something that you were saying. Growing up, you were saying that that you were doing at twelve years old. You got into to chefing, or or you you were cooking around like twelve years old. Like, what were you cooking? If you could take me back, take me back a little bit. <laughs> what were you cooking at twelve years old? What were you cooking? Cause, cause See, man, this is the thing people don't understand. Sandwiches were my thing. <laughs> Listen, man, it was, it was, I, I had, I, cause I'm the oldest, so okay, I would have to take stuff out. You know, you know, you know, we we joke around and be like, oh man, this is when you know, you know, hey, chicken take a little longer to man, defrost man. than that thirty minutes that you got left that you oh, probably should have took that out five hours ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, that's basically what it was, man. It was a lot of um take this out. Um, I hated it. Um, I hated it so much. Um, I was more of the reader, more of the, like, you know, I wanted to be a chemist, you know, right. like science was my thing. You know, like I studied the periodic table, like I could tell you every, all the elements, everything, what they went, you know, so that's, that, that's what I was on. Uh, really wasn't, really wasn't on this cooking thing, but um, I knew at eighth grade when I had the choice between home economics and auto body yeah it's home economics for me <laughs> <laughs> two things you know what i mean is i ain't got to get my hands dirty with them cars All right and then also it's a room full of women so it's like all right oh, you know that's why I mean? you went for the women you went for the women <laughs> he was like i don't even get dirty in school let me go ahead yeah and I... <laughs> hey so with that with i know you were saying you read a lot in science and those mm -hmm. do you think that kind of uh, transition over into being a chef oh for sure um i think that's one of the biggest biggest things is um being able to take um i think that's what what i gravitated to especially when i took a tour um in uh, of the culinary school that i went right. to um in 2009 so i just was like oh oh okay like right. this is gonna elevate you know like my you know the stuff that the basics that i had already known you know what i mean over time I mean, you grow up, you know, you cook soul food. I mean, anybody pretty much can cook soul food when they Not grow up anybody. in the black household. Not anybody. This is true. This is true. I, I don't have you some bad soul food. <laughs> I don't have some bad soul food. And I was wondering 
I was like, I don't know who, who told you to do this, but you don't do, you don't, you don't put this in the mac and cheese. <laughs> right. You, but you, then that's, that's also too when I found out that everybody can't cook. Everybody can't know, cook. I went to culinary school and you sitting here, everybody got the same recipes. We got the same amount of time. We got all right. of the same thing. But why your food coming out different than mine? If you following the recipe to a T and that's the thing about a recipe now, you know, it's just the blueprint. You know, right. you, right. you you actually putting yourself into that dish. And that's why when people be like, oh, man, mine don't taste like yours because it's not. My mm-hmm. blueprint is different than your blueprint. My imprint on this dish is going to be totally different than yours. Right. You know, so just appreciate the fact that, hey, man, I'm glad you like my recipe enough to mm-hmm. want to do it. You know what I mean? And 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 bring it to your family. Of course, it's going to taste differently because you putting you in it. You know what I mean? Right. And, and that's a big thing, man. But yeah, everybody can't cook. Everybody. So everybody. speaking of that, right, I love the fact that you hit on that every you can have a recipe, but it's the, the blueprint. You putting yourself into it. And I know um, what what one of the things that you were saying is culinary actually found you in a dark place. Right. Found you in a dark place. So when you say that, what does that look like? Like what dark place would you say, or what dark place were, were you in and how did culinary kind of pull you out of that situation? So at the time um, that I was, um, that I, that I, that I, that, I, that culinary found me is um, I was dating a girl and it ended up going left quick and it shouldn't have you know um and there was some false accusations of some stuff and for me it was just like yo like why are you doing this like i mean seriously like you know so and once i had to go through that it was just like you don't want to be here anymore you're just like yo like i mean i know i'm a good person i know i do right by people and for someone to be that close to kind of pretty much like stab you in the back and in the front like it wasn't even just Mm. the back you know what i mean so it's like seriously you know what i mean to me of all like i would have never never you know thought that that would have happened to up you know to me but that shows like anybody can do anything at any given time to to a person right because that person is not not cut from the same thing that we're cut from where we don't do that to people you know what i mean and so um i remember being home and just depressed, like bad, like it was bad, you know, like being at the edge of the cliff. And um, I told a a friend of mine, um, it's like being at the edge of the cliff and you literally want to take a step over because you don't see anything out, Mm -hmm. another way out, you know? And that's why when people, when I hear people say, oh, you know, um, people that commit suicide is selfish. And I think, no, it's not really selfish. It's just, they don't see another way out. Right. They feel like that's it. You know, so it's like, I mean, kind of you have to show, give them grace because they have, they have battled, they are battling day in and day out. Like it's, it's not just some, you know, oh, I just don't want to be here because I don't want to be here. No, it's like, that is it. I've gone every route that I thought possible and now I'm here and that's where I was at. And uh, when I, when I visited school, it just, it spoke to me in ways that, you know, was just like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like I could do this, you know, and I was a C student in high school. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I didn't really apply myself. But then when I got to culinary school, it was different. Like mm-hmm. I'm getting A's and B's and, you know, making a dean's list. And, um, you know, I ended up getting inducted into the honor society. So it was different, you know, all the way around. It wasn't just, you know, um, oh, you you know, you learn how to cook. But it was it showed me that my creativity was was different, you know, and it was um at that level, you know, like, cause this was before I, I, we couldn't Google nothing. We couldn't look stuff up. You know, we didn't have all these TV shows that they have now. We didn't have a, a lot of that stuff back then. It was 2009 and people be like, no, we, I'm like, no, I'm back into that. We didn't have all of that. So yeah. you know, I remember being in class and this was um, a class where we didn't have no meat. So we had to do vegetarian, vegan stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. So you, this not is all the Listen up. He about to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, you know, so I I never not cook with meat or butter or milk or dairy. We grew up on hand hops and stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, so all these things are new. You know, like you're, you're finding out what tofu is and tempeh and, you know, seitan and, you know, like you're like, what in the world is all this stuff? But 
what happened was, you know, I got paired up with another kid and, um, and he was like, man, I'm going to do, um, he wanted to do a burger. And I'm like, well, I mean, what goes with burgers is fries. I'm like, well, we can't, you know what I mean? I can't, I don't want to use a potato. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make tofu fries. I don't know why it came up, that thought came into my head, but it did. And the teacher was like, you know, like she kind of looked at me like, and then I pulled it off. I mean, I mixed some paprika and some turmeric to give the color of it. So it was just like the thinking of it. She said, you know, like the way you think, you know, it's like, it, it shows me that you aren't just in this just to a get rich or be famous or, you know, anything like that. Like you really do have a, a deep passion for it. And that, and, you know, that showed it, I did, you mm -hmm. know, but, um, but yeah, that's why I say culinary saved me, man. And in, in the sense of it found me because it was able to open up my eyes to um, something that I didn't see. Cause I never saw a career as a chef. I never right. saw, you know, I mean, especially as, as a black man, like, we don't see that. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't anyone I could look to. I mean, we had, you know, like the G Garvins and the, um, I forget who else was out around that time. But it was they were, you know, really not popular, you know, right, unless right. you unless you had the money to go to these different restaurants. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. after uh, Top Chef came out, I remember um, and watching it, then I kind of, you know, was like, oh, OK, you know, can see some stuff. But I mean, other than that, man, you know, you. I never, I never woke up and said, "Hey, I want to be a chef." Let's just put it that way. Yeah, it just came to you. So, with that being said, I know you were saying that now you have different, um, like, like uh, Hell's Kitchen and all those things, right? Who, who's your three top uh, chefs that you kind of look up to now? Oh man, um, Tyler Florence is one of them. Um, he was he was my favorite from you know um, his first show. I think was boiling water um, or boiling something. It was you know some type of you know, but that was a show I watched. Um, Gordon Ramsay would be up there, mm -hmm. um, and then um, I would say uh, Thomas Keller. Um, okay. You know. Okay. okay. Some of the guys that um, that I see their stuff and I just go okay you know, um, but. I like I like Gordon, you know, out of the three because it's just his attitude. You know, I know yeah, people like, he, oh, he he's this and that, but I just like it's this is attitude, man. It's just right. you know, like the you know, even uh Bobby Flay, like people don't like Bobby Flay because they say, Oh, he's cocky, is that but he's earned it though. Like, I mean, like the man can flat out cook. Like, I mean, yeah. the, the dude can cook, like it ain't like he just making this stuff up, like he can flat out cook. Can, and that's why yeah. everybody wanna be him, you know what I mean? And and it's like when you have pushed yourself to the, to be the best. You know what I mean? Of course, people are going to want to chase you. You know what I mean? I right. mean, look at Michael Jordan. How many people want to, you know, I mean, Kobe was like, yo, like, I want to be better than him. You know what I mean? So, you know, but. I agree. But yeah, that would be my three. So with that being said, right, what makes you, what makes you stand out? Like, as a chef, what would you say makes you stand out? Like what's what's like, yo? Know, if if I if I come in your kitchen, this is who I am. This is this is what I bring to the table. <laughs> this right here. This okay. right here. That's it right there. That's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I walk in and I do that. It, it it lowers the temperature of everything. You know what I mean? Everybody. It makes people feel at ease. Um, I feel like a family member. I feel like big cuz. You know right. what I mean? You know, I feel like, oh, he's like a big grizzly teddy bear. You know what I mean? All of the, all of the things, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know what they're going to say once I lose all this weight, though. Then it's going to be like, well, what are you going to say then? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you have to do massages and stuff. <laughs> 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 you have to, to do massages and, and cooking massage. Hey. Um, <laughs> so mainly you, I, you were saying, your personality. Um, you come yeah. in with a smile and you leave them with a smile because of not only your, your food, but also on top of that, you bring, you have a certain energy, you know, yeah. what I mean? so it's, it's just, it's different. It's different. Um, your, your best recipe, right? I mean, not recipe, your best dish. I, I don't want to give no recipes, no recipes, no recipes. Um, <laughs> So from head to toe, we're gonna to start off with the appetizer. What's your your best your best dish? Oh man! Appetizer. 
Uh, appetizer, it was one of my favorite dishes in culinary school. And I know people are going to be like, oh, that's boring. You know what I mean? But, you know, to me, um, it's one of those dishes that have has always stuck with me. Um, and to this day, it's still one of my favorites to, to do. And I don't really have a ton of favorite dishes to make. Um, but I, it would have to be lobster bisque. All right. So what makes yours so unique and different than anybody else? I don't think mine's is more unique or, than anybody. It's more so, you know, the time that I take, you know, um, I, I spend a lot more time, you know, with it, you know, um, and baby it a little bit more than most people. Um, Cause most people, you know, rush it, you know, but, you know, roasting the lobster shells, you know, grinding them up, you know, soaking them, doing all the, you know, just getting more flavor, extracting more flavor out of, you know, just, <laughs> you know, just that, um, just figuring out what lobster is going to taste best, you know, um, sous vide in the lobster, you know, um, instead of just, you know, that way it's cooked in a bag and, you know, stuff like that. Those are the, you know, little touches where you're sitting there going, hey, you, you, you spent a long time on that dish, but it's the finished product, you know, once you've done, I mean, the, the velvety, creamy, you know, rich, you know, lobster taste in your mouth, and then you just, you know, you put the spoon in there, you leave it, you know, and you close your eyes. I and see. You like, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the appetizer. Then we yeah. got to, to to what is it? The entree. Yeah. So entree, man. Your, that's favorite, your favorite dish. Your favorite dish. That's a tough one. Oh man. So I'm putting them on the hot seat, the, y'all. Put them on the yeah, hot. The entree would have to be one of my favorite fish. So it's, uh, and again, people are going to be like, that's not, da, da, da. but again, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, this is, you know, what I would go to, you know, um, I would have to say chili and sea bass, um, pan seared, yeah, pan seared, chili and sea bass. And then, you know, um, and then a beurre blanc butter sauce, you know, for that, some lightly sauteed kale, um, and butter poached potatoes, you know, um, that's, you know, light, simple, nothing too crazy, you know, um, sexy, you know, so keep it simple, you know, but yeah, that would probably be my entree, you know. Sound good, sound good. Yeah. Now, now here, here's the kicker. Now, this, this right here, <laughs> this right here matters, you, you know, because you, you, you said, like 70% of your clients is more so females. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And most females sometimes have a sweet tooth. Dessert. What's what's a dessert? Talk to me. Oh man. Now, now so, don't mess this. You can't mess this up. I, I know you're not gonna mess it up, but but they, I'm, they probably, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna mess it up because I know I, I probably would say 80% of women love chocolate. But okay. this dessert is not gonna have chocolate in it. So you're switching it up on them. I'm switching it up. All right, I'm listening to you. I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening to you. So um, probably last year or year before, I made a margarita strawberry bread pudding. Shut your mouth. <laughs> what? So, like, it actually the bread pudding actually was infused with uh, margarita, you know. Okay. And then um, when it when I finished, I you know. Uh, did some salt, I meant some sugar on it. Um, and, you know, the strawberries was flowing through it and, you know, nice little um, sauce that had the flavors of a margarita, like a strawberry margarita, like literally like it tasted like oh. you were sitting by a beach, you know what I mean? But you was actually eating this bread pudding, so. Strawberry margarita bread pudding. Bread pudding, yeah, yeah. You can't go wrong with that. You, you know? <laughs> You can't no, go wrong with that. No, no, no. no. But you, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, and, and that's the thing. Like, I don't have favorite dishes, so like, people be like, "Oh, what's your favorite thing to make?" So, but I just like to be. I like to create new stuff, or you know, see some stuff, you know, um, that I've seen, and just like kind of put them together, and you know, um, I try. I try to just keep you know creating dishes. I mean, I know people see stuff on on TikTok, and you know, like. Like people with like the egg rolls and stuff. Like, like again, like I got receipts. I got I can show you stuff. I've been doing years. that. I, you've been doing that for a long time. I, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's again. It's not. I, I'm not saying these people biting off me or anything else. But yeah. it's just like 
It's like when you've done something and you're like, wait a minute, we're talking about egg rolls? Like we're talking about putting mac and cheese in an egg roll? Like I've been did that. Like I did a Philly cheesesteak egg roll with a jalapeno popper. Like, I mean, like, you know what I mean? I've done the macaroni and cheese egg roll. Like I was like, this is not new to me. You know what I mean? Right. It's new to everybody else, but it's social you know, media. Social, social media, media. Has, has now, because when you were doing it, it wasn't much of a large platform on social media. It was just people that was in the neighborhood that was around the way that just knew Chef T. But now that social media has come out, you got someone that saw someone that saw someone that did it. And now that now here we here we are, right? Mm -hmm. Um speaking of that, speaking of that. When, what's up with the, the the egg rolls and the pineapples? When do we when do we bring that back? Because I remember at a particular time you you was doing it. Oh, not. And I never I never actually had one. I'm just saying I never had one because you always sold out when I listen, tried to knock on the door to grab. Listen, me. I think I think Brandon and Shamika was like my top customers when it came to those pineapple boats, man. And it was your top marketers because they was yeah, all, they, 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 they was. You need to get this. I'm telling you, they, real. Mm -hmm. I was like, when I was doing Soul Food Thursdays, man, they were killing them pineapple boats. You know what I mean, like left and right. You know, but again, it goes back to like, I mean, I, I again, I'm I. I didn't start this stuff, but it's just like I've done it. But it was like years ago before it became, you know, a thing. And right. now it's a thing, you know, and everybody's like, oh, you know, pineapple boats. I'm like, OK, I mean, like I've been there, done that, you know, and not to right. knock anybody. You know what I mean? Because I definitely don't want people to think I'm hating, you know, but for me, it's just like, OK. Right. <laughs> You know, like what? What's the algorithm? What you know for me to get you know views on stuff that I had? And like I said, I posted something you know before, and somebody was like, "Oh, sweet potato this," and I was like, "I mean, like, okay, I mean, when can we elevate past you know like these things?" You know what I mean? Right. That's why when I did the the chocolate chip cookie with the sweet potato stuff, then everybody again. Chocolate like I said, with the sweet potatoes. Crum crum I was crumbling before crumble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> man, and, 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 and a couple of people. Listening. We need, we need, to, we need to make sure we just, we, hey, everybody, let's put these orders in. This man saying some stuff that that I'm trying to go away from sweets. He bringing me back. Listen, Marvel, man, I'm telling you, I I did it when I. This was back when I was working at Chase. Man, I did it. And I just had an idea in my head, like, hmm, man, let me do something different with these sweet potatoes. And I love chocolate chip cookies. So I'm like, man, you know what? I'm just going to put them together. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I took them to work. I didn't even sell them. I took them to work and just gave them to, to the team. They was like, yo, chef. I mean, this was before I even a chef. They was like, yo, T or T.A., they, these are fire. You know what I mean? Was like, T.A. Yeah, this one I was T.A. You know what I mean? This was, uh, this was that's who I met, T.A. Right. <laughs> we, we're not going to talk about T.A. today. <laughs> that that <laughs> guy was different. We're going to stay away from Chef T is what we're going to stay on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chef T is what we're going to stay on. So what would you, because you know a lot of individuals, they, they, they want to be chefs. You have up and coming chefs. Now, you've been in the game since 09, probably a little bit longer. But when I say in the game, like like to the point where you're like, hey, this is where it's at. But you have a lot of chefs that are wanting to come up in the game, right? They, they're like, oh, boom, boom, I, I want to be this. But then they hit hurdles. They run into certain things. And I know you've experienced it. Um, we Offline, we've had conversations more so in the beginning phases, right? What kept you going and what advice could you give these up-and-coming chefs that are looking to take things to another level? Because most people don't know you – uh, what a month ago you was in no two months ago you was in uh new orleans then i called back you was in texas then i called back you were somewhere else and then out of nowhere you was like oh i'm back in florida i was like bro you confusing me i so you, you're you're traveling you're doing this and you're living it alabama too matter of fact you're like you're living what what you dreamed of what would you give what advice would you give that 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 chef that's like, man, I keep running to wall after wall. I, I I can't get a break. Like, what advice would you give that person? Uh, I would say the biggest the biggest piece of advice is, you know, uh, understand why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say understand it, I mean knowing that 
hey, I, I see Bill over there, you know, he just made, uh, you know, a quarter million dollars selling hot dogs, or I seen this person doing, you know, got, you know, 10,000 views for this, you know, uh, hamburger that they did. You know, it's like, know why you're doing it and understand that, hey, I, I'm, I'm not doing it for, like for me, like I, I got into this because it was never, it's not, not for clout. It's not for, it's for the act, the pure love of what I do. I mean, it, it's to, if I didn't get paid another cent mm -hmm. for it, I would still wake up and think of how to create the, the best, the perfect, the sweetest, the dish that's gone, you know what I mean? Like I still would think about it. Like I would eat, eat it, sleep it, breathe it. It still, it doesn't change. You know what I mean? Now, granted, I want to get paid. I, you know what right, I mean? Like right, I do need to course. get paid. You know what I mean? But if 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 that was taken away from me, you got to ask yourself, how would I feel about it? If if the money aspect was taken away, and and if I could just do this free, I still would wake up and try to create dishes, man, just on the regular because it's just I love it. You know, it's different. Like I, and it's not even it's past love. Like it's it's on, like you know, like like stalkerish level. Like it's that's that's how bad it is. Like hey, I see. Okay, I see that plate over there's empty. You know what I mean? Like I wonder if I put some tacos on there. You know what kind of tacos would I make? Ooh, what if I fried these in duck fat? Hmm, interesting. Quail egg. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like you know, so you start, you know, <laughs> just throwing stuff out. It was like okay, well, you know, that is the the love that I have for it, you know what I mean? I it's not just a... I feel you. Hey, I, I know you love it because you just said something that threw me off for a second. I was like, well, what? You said, let me see if I can cook this in duck fat. I said, oh, oh first of all, I didn't even know the duck had fat on it. <laughs> so you, you just taught me something. I thought... First of all, duck fat is like the Rolls Royce of fats. Oh, it's like the Rolls Royce ghost, the Phantom. Like it's like, you know, it's like the Bugatti. You, you know, just talk, it, you it, taught me some. You, you know, just, it's just, you know, it's a beautiful, me. beautiful thing, man. You, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, you just taught me something. So, in in listening to you, it, it's the passion, man. It's the passion that mm -hmm. you have. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we do what we do for a living because we have to make a living, right. but. You don't, and I'm pretty kind of what you were saying. You don't go to work, but you don't go and, and go to a client house and be like, "Oh man, I gotta go to work." You actually enjoy cooking and putting a smile on people's face. Like when I come to work, I enjoy like what I do, and by default, I feel like that passion actually is the reason why we're in the situations we're in. We're able to do the things that we want to do because we we believe, you know what I mean. So so. Bro, I, I I feel like if anyone was listening to that and you're in a situation where you feel like, man, as a chef or just in life in general, you feel like you want to give up, that that example is definitely it, it aligns. Like make sure it's something that you you love what you're doing. I mean, yeah. man, I got Chef T in the building. A lot of let me I'm gonna go ahead and say a lot of people know him as TA. Some people know him as Terrence Fisher, but today he's Chef T. He's Chef T. He's Chef T. Um, so, Chef, the Valentine's Day coming up, man. It's, it's right around the corner. And, yeah. and I know you were saying that you were looking into doing brunch. Gentlemen, can I pause real quick? Gentlemen, let's do something different this year. Let Ladies and gentlemen, let me put it that way. Because yeah. Valentine's Day is for both parties in my eyes. But uh, we ain't gonna get on that topic. But anyways, let's do something different. We go to the restaurants. How many times you've gone to a restaurant and you waiting in a line, or you booked a reservation and they still got you waiting? Why not have someone in house and cook for you, right? So that being said, I mean, I'm a backup. I'm gonna let the man do what he do. What does Valentine's Day look like um, for these individuals, and how can you make it such an experience? that they'll never forget. And and it's only a, a minimum that can do this. So y'all better line up. Well, I'm gonna give it to you, Chef. So, so like, so I'm already booked that night, you know, uh, Valentine's night. I'm gonna say so, uh, 
and, and uh and it's it's a it's a mutual friend of ours um she um she she booked a um it's active a couples two couples so yeah it's four nice, people nice. but um Are you but yeah so whole night or just yes yeah, it's gonna be the whole night because it's a it's a three course um meal they know just know stingy mean? boy <laughs> they don't want to get down on that one so what what else do you have what else can you I mean, I know so you're like even money. like the the weekend the weekend leading up to Valentine's because Valentine's Day is on a Wednesday this year, mm -hmm. so it's in the middle of the week. So you know, like I mean, so you still got Saturday, you got Sunday, you know, you got Monday. And again, you don't have to do it on Valentine's Day. It can be done the day after, you know, weeks after. Like I feel like you know, booking a personal chef, a private chef, you know, um, to come to your home, um, that's a, a very intimate thing. Um, that you get to create this memory with, you know, your loved one, you know what I mean? And, um, and even if it's, you know, like I said, for me, um, I have, have, you know, created the gallon day brunch, you know, so that, that could be booked as well. So if you want to get a group of your girlfriends, or even if it's a mixed crowd, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, that, um, just to do a brunch. I mean, it, it's, it could be anything. I think people, kind of look at it and go oh that's expensive and oh that's expensive but you know when you when you get everybody to chip in you know i mean is it really that expensive you know what right. i mean but we spend we'll spend you know 250 to 300 dollars on you know um what we want you know and, and and truthfully yeah it's just the experience you know what i mean like you'll rent a car to go to miami for the weekend and come back and you've spent you know eight to a thousand dollars just like that Right. You know, and and it's like you forget what happened. You know what I mean? Like, you and it's like, <laughs> right. You know what you I mean? Too much to but, drink. <laughs> but now you can create a, a, a memory where you're like, OK, you know, like I had him come to my, my house, cook for our anniversary or whatever. And this is what, these, you know, people say, you know, um, oh, you know, when Chef T came, you know, he was punctual. He's on time. You know what I mean? Like, that's one of the biggest things. I'm I, I don't I'm not late. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I'm always in constant communication with my client as to, hey, um, I'm in route. I'm about this many, you know, oh, I'm going to be, you know, here by this time. You know, um, these things, you know, communication is the biggest thing. Well, um, but the, 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 the bit, the best advice that I can give is, you know, and it, it doesn't even have to be me. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm okay if you, if you decide to book with another chef, I feel like, you know, the more personal chefs and private chefs get, you know, to these events, it's, it's better for the for the, the industry. You know what I mean? Um, and then it's also better for the person. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's the reason that they got into it. You know, and I mean, sometimes you may you may pick the wrong chef and and that's OK. You know, but at the end of the day, don't don't, you know, dog them. Just, you know, right. give them that feedback. You know what I mean? Give them, oh, the, the, you know, the, that's what's wrong with like. We, we we'll we'll get mad at a, at a chef, right? And we'll we'll dog them and talk extremely bad. But we'll go to McDonald's, get upset with them, but go back there the next day to get another. The hat. Next day, yep. And go back there. And, oh, but I never next go day. to this person. But McDonald's is a multi-billion-dollar company. Correct. Some of these chefs are actually up and coming, trying to make things happen. One one bad uh, review can drastically damage that yep. damage their life for a lifetime. And, so, that, and that's the thing, you know, that's the other thing, too, is leave reviews, man. Like, we we need reviews. Like, you know, as many events that I do throughout the year, like, I mean, you would look and be like, oh, he only got a couple of reviews. It's because people don't leave reviews. And it's, it yeah. has nothing to do with my ability or capability of performing the task. It's just the fact that people don't leave reviews. You know what right. I mean? It's important um, to be to for you to leave a review, especially if you know this person is going out of their way to give you A plus service, A plus food, and then also gave you a price that was feasible. Right. You know what I mean? Why not leave them a review? Because that's going to only help the next person. It also helps that person keep continue to grow in his craft. And it is one of those things where it's like, bro, like, it's intimidating to come into someone else's home. You don't know this kitchen. You are preparing food for people that you don't know. And you, you don't know if you got to clean the counters or not. 
And then you get one shot. <laughs> and you get one shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you one opportunity, you know, and 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 it's still it's 50-50. It could go left, it could go right. Like it 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 could be good, it could be bad. Like it's it's you're that close to, you know, and, and that's that was the other thing I would say is, you know, um if you're if you're a young cook, young chef, you know, whatever you want to call yourself, um, put in the work. You right. know, like put in the work. Don't just like, I, you know, people I oh, man, I love basketball, but you don't, you don't, you're not a hooper though. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's levels to it. Like yeah. you just want to step behind the three and shoot. You know what I mean? Like, but do you really play? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you just can't pick up a knife or a, a coat or, you know, yeah, you may look the part, but when it comes down to it, if a person said, Hey, one of my guests is allergic to this, or Hey, one of my guests is, you know, a vegan. One of my guests is vegetarian. You know, right. like you got to be able to pivot to make sure that you can adapt and change that. What if the oven stopped working? And, and you know what I mean? What do you do then? Like what, you know, you, you have to be able to think through these problems ahead of time and then also be in the moment. One thing I tell myself going into any event that I do is something will happen. Don't know what it is going to be. Something is going to happen. And people be like, oh, that you shouldn't think like that. You shouldn't think like that. No, I think like that because I prepare myself for when it to happen. I'm cool. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I, it doesn't freak me out. It doesn't scare me because I was already prepared for it. You know what right. I mean? When you go into it and you're like, oh, nah, ain't nothing going to happen to me. And then it happened. You, you, you know, you stress. You know, like, now nah, you're out. sitting there going, oh, I don't know mm-hmm. what to do. You know, it's too late then. Like, right. you know, but, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, loving what you do, making sure you're doing it for the right reason. Don't get into this, you know, um, to try to be rich because right. it's not going to happen. You know, like, can it happen? Yeah. But it, it's, it requires a lot of work. You know, you may not like people be like, oh, well, who have you cooked for? I mean, I cook for people like all my clients are celebrities. You know what I mean? I don't I don't brag about the celebrities that I cook for, you know, like. It's been some cool ones that I cook for because, uh, you know, my friends know me. So they were like, oh, yeah, that OK, that makes sense because you are a big that person fan. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, like fanboying with them because they know it. But I don't post it. You know what I mean? Because it's I don't I'm not trying to get any clout from it. You know what I mean? Like or anything like that. It's just I enjoy when people book me. I, I mean, you could be, you know, the janitor at a, you know, of, a, of some somewhere or you could be you know, a CEO, you know what I mean? I'm going to still do the same thing. I'm going to go in and give you the same that I gave that person that's a janitor, you know what I mean? So, um, cause that's how I just see people. I mean, I, I love what I do and I, I'm going to love, you know, serving you and your family. You know what I mean? So question for you. <clears throat> um, I know you were saying you love being booked. Do you have, um, a, a, what is it called? Do you have a referral site? Well, a referral program where when individuals are looking to book or say, say if Johnny has like 12 family members and they're like, oh, well, hey, here's Chef T. And then, you know what I mean? Like a referral program with a person. No, but I probably should start because, you know, like I have several families that I've I've cooked for their, their cousin and they'll be like, oh, I, you cook for my cousin, such and such. And I'm like, and then they remind me, and I'm like, oh, and then they're like, hey, my cousin going to reach out to you, da 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 So I probably need to do that. You know what you I mean? Should. It's not a bad idea. You sh- I mean, you should do it. You, you, yeah. Yeah, you, sh- you, 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 you should. Yeah, you should. I ain't going to, what? Yeah, you should. I'm just leaving it like that. You should. <laughs> um, um, so with, with all that being said, right, I mean, you, you, You've been all over, I want to say the US, more probably nationwide cooking. Um, where do you see yourself in 2024? And then in the next few years, where do you see yourself in this industry and just in general? Where 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 is Chef where is Chef T? Um, I think I think I've come to terms with, you know, some things that I just didn't want to do. Um you know, so and and not that it was a bad thing that I you didn't want to do, but it was more so I just never really thought about it. But if I if I look at this whole culinary experience as a collective, 
I didn't think about any of this. So in actuality, I mean, you know, I'm not afraid of that. It's just like, ah, you know, is that really one of the road I want to go down? But I think it's time, you know, but um, the biggest thing is um, in the definitely next couple of years is um, either a food trailer um, of some sort and uh, working on that. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's time, you know, because you're trying to fight through and book, you know, different clients and these different agencies have, you know, um, these, you know, where people can go through to find chefs and stuff, but it's like, they take a percentage. So you're sitting here going, okay, I'm already behind, you know, either 18% or 30%. That's the, the range most of them have. So it's like, okay, you know, what, what can I do to supplement that when I don't have, you know, um, I'm not booking those events. It's like, okay, a food trailer. All right. So then I have several items to sell off a food trailer and people can have, you know, I can do throwback Thursday where I'm bringing the, uh, the pineapple boats back or, you know, those type of dishes that people remember, especially here, you know, um, and then now they can say, Hey, Hey girl, we going over here, you know, chef T got his food trailer, you know, and then hopefully that can also bring me more, you know, personal and um, private clients that I can cook for. So, um, I would say definitely the food truck in the next several years, um, uh, food trailer actually, um, but, but yeah, that would, that would be it, you know, and then also uh, working on getting this sauce out this summer. Um, uh, I started with the J sauce and then, um, so now I've, I've come up with, uh, I developed the vegan version of that. Um, so Ooh. I'm going to be rolling. Vegan version of the J sauce. Yeah. So J you know, sauce people, was hitting. Yeah. People like that, man. That was hitting. You know, yes. Sir. Yeah, hopefully they like that, the vegan version. Um, and then um, I have a honey mustard sauce that I that I have, and you know, um, and then probably a, you know some type of uh, barbecue sauce. But I don't think I really want to. Maybe a sugar free something, um, something it's for the different. Yeah, you know, just a little different. But you know, that's going to be the collection. Um, just having a couple of different sauces and uh, working on labels and names and you know all of that stuff, and you know, getting the right bottles for them, and you know, just. Um, being able to get them into local stores, uh, mom and pop stores. And, you know, that's pretty much the focus right now is just how to expand and how to, you know, continue to build a name for yourself. Um, so people know who you are and know what you, you know, they'd be like, oh, you know what? That's a good product because, you know, Chef T. Because, I mean, I support everybody, you know what I mean, um, as much as, I, much as I can. But also, yeah. you know, need to, to, to kind of continue to pour into myself as well so yeah you can't pour into nobody with an empty bottle that's correct yeah so i know you were saying you you book you have other like agencies and stuff that book with you do they keep you you pretty you be pretty busy uh so january is always a slow month um just because it's after the holidays um most of the time it february picks up march and then it kind of rolls into March, April, May, you know, and then definitely summer. Um, summer is, you know, is always busy. And then you kind of, you know, slow down and then pick back up in, in the October, November, December, you know, time frame. That, yeah. that, you know, so like that, I would say half of the first quarter or a quarter of the first quarter is kind of slow. And then like the third quarter is, is kind of really, really slow. But, um, you know, it's just a matter of how aggressive you want to be. Like I said, um, I think, you know, just trying to find out ways to to, to collab with people, uh, work mm -hmm. with other chefs. Um, that's that's another one of my big, big things that I want to do this year is because sometimes we we kind of mess up the market because mm -hmm. we're not working together, you know, um, and I think you have a competition people, instead of a partnership yeah you know like if we can come together and you know and I always say like you know i grew up watching like voltron and transformers and stuff like that so anytime you you know can build and put each other together and even now like forming the avengers like yeah you got your talents i got my talents how can we utilize this to not only reach your audience but my audience but then right. even expand it past that um, because now people are going to be like, oh, them brothers working together. Oh, that's, I know it's going to be, you know, legit. So um, 
just just trying to do that more gotcha. um, as well, you know, because I see a lot of I see it in corporate America. You know, I mean, I, I, I tell you all the time, I said, you drive down Lake Mary Boulevard, man, you see, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, Burger Fi, Hardee's, you know, and they all sell burgers. You know what I mean? They just do it differently. But they all communicate with each other, too. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm going to roll out this special, you know. And then want to roll out a special, then guess what the other one's going to do? Roll out a special, too. Now you have to, you know, you choose. But it's all about, hey, man, we're just going to go down the line. And, hey, we got a new product. You know what I mean? Right. You know, it's just keep it competitive. Like, for me, it's like, okay, Chick-fil-A opened up. And then across the street, another chicken place opened up. You know what I mean? It's like, wait, what's going on? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so, like, to me, it's like, why can't? I know how to cook soul food. You cook soul food. This person over here cooks soul food. Why can't we come together and have a soul food event? Hey, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you talking? They listening? So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you know, that just, that's, that's none. but that's the thing. I think money gets in people in the way for people, um, and they, you know, and I, and I, and I see it all the time. But for me, it's like understanding, okay, what the split is going to be. Um, how you're gonna split it, you know, um, and then just just work towards it. Some people right. feel like, oh, I work I work harder than this person over here. Why do they, you know? But it's like, if you think that way in the beginning, then it's not gonna work. You right. gotta all give 120 percent. You know what I mean? And as long as you're giving 120 percent and you know you're giving 100, okay, you know, like then we're all gonna benefit that much more because we are capable of, you know, reaching so much more. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And, and you're not having to do it alone. And that's the biggest right. thing, um, it, you know, and, and a lot of people will will fall because, you know, they, they're trying to do it by themselves. And, they want to do it and all it, alone. And, yeah, you know, and it's it's tough. I mean, I, I ain't going to lie, it's tough. <laughs> right. I, it's tough. Trust me, um, I, never, I haven't seen a millionaire become a millionaire by themselves. Any person yep. you see, they, someone along the way has helped them and they partner with somebody, even if they say they didn't, they had to, it can be the smallest thing. They partner with somebody. Um, so with this year, with the goals in, in, in mind and where you're looking to take everything, right. What it, how can individuals reach out to you, connect to you to book and also not just book support. And when that sauce is ready, Get that sauce <laughs> and, and make sure for because it's not just uh Valentine's Day, you were saying it. You got birthdays. A lot of a lot of times y'all y'all don't want to cook. Y'all y'all focus on doing this. You got birthdays, you got bridal showers, uh weddings, you I mean, unfortunately you have funerals, right? You have all these different events that cooking shouldn't be on the the front of your mind. Allow someone else to do it take the stress off, allow someone that that's going to do it with passion, that's going to do it with passion that takes it to another level to make you be like, yeah, you know what? Not only was I comfortable, the food was good. I felt great. When I ate, I, I became happier when you're down and out, food can make you happy. When you're happy and having a good time, it just enlightens and heightens the mood. I mean, why not reach out to Chef T? How, how do we how do we contact you? Uh, right now, it's uh, on social media, okay. um, I, Instagram, uh, TikTok at Chef Terrence Fisher. Um, I don't really, I don't tweet, so um, I no started tweet. threads. No X, that's what they call oh, it. X, X, X. I didn't really see it, you. See what I'm saying? You know, like <laughs> I, you know, X. You know, um, I don't X a lot, um, <laughs> but. Uh, I would just say TikTok and IG, Facebook, um, at Chef Terrence Fisher. You know, those are the three that I, I normally roll with. Um, so, yeah, um, working on the website. I mean, it's, you know, like I said, man, when you when you got that many hats on, you know what I mean? It's like you got to pick and choose. OK, yeah, this is where I'm just going to not worry about right now. You know what I mean? So gotcha. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah. But back to what you were saying about the, the food thing, man. And I tell you all the time, you know, it's not just about, you know, um, the cooking part for me. It's just, you know, taking that off your plate, you know, um, being able to 
you know, because people don't like or want to do it. And right. it's like, I'm like, you know, like, like, you know, I don't get tired. You know what I mean? Like I, I cook, you know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, you need me there, you know, 2 a.m. All right, cool. You know what I'm I mean? There. Like, let's go. You know what right. I mean? Like, so it's, it's for me, it's just like, I know it's helping um, serve a purpose in the sense that, you know, you're not able to, um, now you're able to focus on your family or focus on, you know, creating the bond that you need to make those memories. You know, when, when a person is in the kitchen, usually there's something else going on in the living room or outside that they can't be a part of because they have this constant, right. let me do that for you. Let me be that person in the kitchen. That way you can, um, you know, maximize your time because yeah. that's the one thing we can't get back. You know, we can't make it. We can't get it back. get time back. You know what I mean? I, so, we wish we could, but there, there's no time coming back at all. <laughs> um, so I feel like one, I'm I'm gonna need your services coming up, but we'll talk about that offline. I'm gonna need you. I have a cousin's event in March. Uh, that's that on. I want to say that Saturday we're definitely gonna need you, but we'll talk about that. Um, but before we leave, I want to leave you with this and tell me where this came from, right? My dreams don't need an Uber driver. My vision doesn't need eyeglasses. My patience, my passion, sorry, will not be handcuffed. My creativity doesn't need a box. My talent doesn't stand alone. My leadership can't be substituted. Where, where, man, that's deep. Who wrote that? <laughs> I did. You did. Yeah. Man, I looked into that. I read it a, a time and time over again, and I was like, "That's crazy! Like that. That's that's powerful, and yeah. that shows, that shows the the person that you are. Each when I read this, it aligns with who you are. So not only are do individuals get you as like a chef or just in in their life they get someone that that's dedicated like i said in the beginning and i'll close saying this you're someone that when the lights are off you walk in the room the lights turn on even in your i've seen where you, things weren't going so right that you turn lights on in other people's room so i would definitely like to give you your flowers and say thank you for being a light to myself and so many surrounding individuals. But before we leave, you have to end this off with a positive saying to the audience. The floor is yours. <laughs> hey, I would probably have to say, man, be great on purpose every day. Yes. You know, be great on purpose every day and, and continue to just smile. I mean, I know that's a little added on, but I think those two important things, you know, waking up with that attitude because you only get one day to, to live the day that you're in, you know? So right. it's like, okay, I got to maximize this. So if I wake up and go, man, I'm going to be great today, you know, you're already going into it. No matter what happens, remember I tell you, no matter what happens, you already mentally prepared for it. So that way when stuff do happen, because we know life going life. Right. <laughs> can't do nothing about that. You can't do nothing about it. But if you're prepared mentally for it, I mean, it, it's going to go, it, you know, the way you think it's going to go in the sense that I prepared for this and I, this is what life's trying to throw at me right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to smile and you go, you know what? All right. I see it. You know what I mean? But I'm still going to be great, you know, right. today on purpose. You know? right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, chefs from this nation to this nation, to this <laughs> side of the world, to this side of the world. We had one of the best of the best, one of the most intricate individuals in today's world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our interview with Chef T. I salute you, man, and I appreciate you tons. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.